Hello, this is Bobby here at Copal TV Repair with a video today uh, showing you how to repair a common problem that we have seen a few times now in uh, Samsung PN64F5300. Um, the biggest problem, the most common problem with that TV that we have seen is actually with a power supply board. And uh, this particular unit that is here, actually the customer turned out to be a local customer who first brought the board to us uh, it had failed power factor correction driver mosfets there those two ones and uh, when they fail it's usually pretty easy to see on the back side of the board uh, the signs of burns and everything and uh, the board is relatively easy to test we're not going to show you that uh, when they fail usually the main fuse blows which leads to the TV being totally dead so if your TV is totally dead the first thing to test is the power supply board and uh, you may have to replace those you may sometimes have to replace some components on the back sometimes the standby driver I don't remember whether it was an IC or again a transistor here with the IC on the back also fails uh, and that may be a problem and uh, this is by far from what we have seen the most common problem and the symptom for it is a totally dead tv uh, however after fixing customers board and uh, giving it back to the customer this is our label uh, they said that the tv turns on and uh, then turns back off and clicks and the click is very very uh, quiet you can't easily hear it so they ended up bringing the tv and what we found out was a problem that we have seen before with other Samsungs from the same uh, time frame and same generation plasmas. What actually was happening was when we turn on the TV, the sustain voltage which is needed to drive the Y main and the X main board, which in turn generate the signals to energize the plasma on the plasma panel. So the VS voltage, which is supposed to be 217 volts, for this label and which is measured between chassis or ground anywhere here and uh, the control point for the VS that's a good measuring point and again we should be about 218 volts DC when the TV was turned on it would raise the 220 and it will gradually start slowing down uh, resulting in the TV just uh, the screen flickering for a second a split second and then going off and this is something that we have seen before in other um, Samsung boards and we actually believe we do have another video for that uh, the one check that you can do before uh, getting to what I'm about to get to is you want to disconnect the cable it's a flip slim cable to open that you need to get it with something sharp I'm using my fingernails and just turn it 90 degrees up like this in order to pull that cable out and what you do once you get to here is you will, you will again power on the TV uh, and you will measure the same VS and it should not be going down the reason it goes down is because <clears throat> the, the main board detects a problem reported by the Y main board or at least that is what we've seen a few times and it just turns off the VS it just tells the power supply to switch off the VS and it detects that problem through that cable now when that cable is disconnected <coughs> it just so happens that the signal that signals the error uh, when it's not connected to any circuit on the board itself it is in high state high resistance high impedance state and by chance that is actually being read as nowhere by the main board so no signal for turning off vs is being sent so what you can do to narrow the problem down to the y main board is just disconnect that cable turn the tv off again measure vs to ground which i'm not showing you uh, and uh, VS should be staying stably on for 218 volts and once you will narrow it down and, and confirm that this is what it is what you want to do is you want to take off that power supply board 
and you want to replace those three small capacitors. Now, companies like Shop Jimmy and others will sell you a bunch of other parts from that board, MOSFETs, this and that and whatnot, uh, and charge you 25, uh, 39, whatever dollars. And we have seen kits that contain components that never ever fail. Now, I'm not saying that you know it's practically impossible. I'm saying that companies make parts, may make repair kits with parts that never ever fail, or hardly ever fail, and they charge twice the amount that it should be charging. Well, in our case, I don't know if you can see. Um, We've already replaced those. They were covered with silicone. We scrubbed it off. And you can find a repair kit. It just contains those three. You can buy them elsewhere if you want. Uh, we're just giving it a solution here. Uh, we will be selling them for something like $12 delivered. And I'm betting that you can get it for less elsewhere. Um, those are not electrolytic caps. Make sure you don't put electrolytics there. Uh, well, after replacing them, I have a working TV, and again, this is not the first time. I believe it is the first time we've done it on this particular... Uh, no, it's not the first time we've done it on this particular one, but it's the first time we make the video. Uh, you can search... Uh, we have another video I remember making maybe half a year ago, uh, about either 60 or... 60 or Actually, it's right over here. Yep, and that is the exact same... Uh, problem I know we've had for that board for this model which happens to be 60 I don't know what it is 60 60 inch uh, here are the fours on this one they are right here 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 and here and uh, for that model they happen to be right next now is it possible that there may be other problems with the board? Of course, always, but not in the few times that we have done it here, at least once on others, because there are other places where the same capacitors are used on this board, and if they have a flaw or are improperly rated, uh, that is, if lower grade capacitors are used, chances are they may fail on other places, and in fact, we have seen that happen on the other model of the board, like in one of, out of ten. Um, so, you know, no guarantee. The odd thing about it is if you try to test them with a meter on the board or outside of the board, you don't see anything wrong with them. You know, they measure 10 microfarads. Um, ESR is good. They just fail on their load. That is, uh, when, when current runs through them. So replacing those three made the TV work. Um, you can take my word or not take my word. It's it's up to you. And even if I show you the TV working, that's not going to prove anything. Cause it may have been anything else. So I'm not going to show it to you. Uh, but that is what it is. And again, you can find them at our website or you can find them elsewhere. And good luck in your repairs. Thank you. Bye from Copel TV and Bobby.